welcome back friends we have discussed about splicing we have discussed about the types of splicing and uh, they are uh, self uh, catalyzed splicing or rather we can call them the intron specified or self uh, splicing and we've also talked about the spliceosome mediated splicing now we have seen the mechanism of both the types now among uh, remember when we first talk about the classification of splicing we've told that uh, the type of self splicing is further divided into two types two subclasses one is uh, the group 2 splicing another one is a group 1 intron splicing group 2 intron splicing and group 1 intron splicing are uh, among them group 2 intron splicing are discussed which is among the self splicing uh, video you can find it in my youtube channel but on the other hand group 1 type of a splicing is, is not yet being talked or yet been did uh, it been discussed sorry now in this video i'm going to make a quick review of the mechanism of how the splicings are actually occurring now in very first case we are talking about the spliceosome mediated process in the spliceosome mediated process we are having so in now any kind of splicing there are three important things one is that uh, there must be the close alignment of all the close arrangement or, or bringing the close proximity of three points. One is the five prime exon uh, five prime splicing site. Another one is the three prime splicing site. Another one is uh, the branch point. Now here in this picture, if I draw, this is the five prime. This is the three prime region. So this is the five prime splicing site. This is three prime splicing site, and this is where the adenine, uh, adenine uh, residue presents or this is the branch point so here this is the branch point okay now this adenine will possess hydroxyl which will start uh, the splicing event so it starts the splicing, e splicing event and it forms a lariat like structure as a result of this it will cleave this E1 now here for the bending of uh, this intron to produce a lariat like structure involves the presence of short nuclear ribonuclear proteins. So in the presence of SN RNPs are important. So if I make a uh, arrow, so here are proteins like U4, uh, U6 and U5 complex are utilized for this process. Now this U proteins are short ribonucleo proteins or short nuclear ribonucleo proteins or SN RNP uh, S is a smaller one so SN RNP now here they forms a complex to produce this bend lariat like structure then when it is produced the U5 is holding to U1 now E1 is having two regions one is a hydroxyl region which is 3 prime other one is a 5 prime phosphate now using this 3 hyd 3 prime hydroxyl it can attack this uh, 3 prime splicing site and then it will generate this uh, mature mrna sorry it will generate this mature mrna along with that it produces this lariat with uh, sn rnps okay this is a process of Spliceosome mediated system of splicing. On the other hand, in case of group 2, we have also discussed this. These two things are self splicing events. Now, in case of group 2, again, we are having three points. Uh, similarly, uh, this is a 5 prime splicing, this is 3 prime splicing site, and this is also the, where A presents, or, or we call them the branch site, okay, or, or uh, branch point. Okay, now here what will happen, the, the incidents happen spontaneously, it is catalyzed by these introns, especially there are nu nucleic acid sequences which suggest this to auto splice itself. Now here this splice is what is happening, again it will provide the hydroxyl, it will attack this E1, as a result of that this exon 1 is released it will produce 3 prime hydroxyl and 5 prime phosphate okay now using this 3 prime hydroxyl it can act as a nucleophile it can attack e2 here it will cleave this lariat structure away and along with that e1 will attach with e2 to produce this mature mrna and here we can have only 
lariat but no snrnp so there is no snrnp in case of any self splicing events this is important we have discussed it so these are the steps we have talked about it before but the third kind the group 1 splicing event is something we haven't talked about now this is resembling this is also self splicing that means it won't require the presence of snrnps so it's simple but instead uh, here we can see in case of both the directions we are having branch points where we are having the adenine now the adenine the 2 prime uh, sugar of the adenine is providing the hydroxyl which will start the reaction but in case of this group 1 introns we don't have a branch point instead we are having a pocket now it is called guanine binding or guanosine binding pocket or g pocket now in this g pocket a guanosine triphosphate will come in and it will bind a guanosine triphosphate so actually it is a gtp can come and set onto the pocket now as this guanosine triphosphate set onto the pocket it can provide the hydroxyl instead of the adenine now remember the difference in case of this both the cases of spliceosome mediator or group 2 we are having a branch point which is on the intronic region of the mrna where adenine is present where it is supplying the hydroxyl which act as nucleophile on the other hand in group 1 spli uh, intron uh, specific splicing there is no uh, region there is no nucleotide present in the intronic region instead a pocket is formed where an external i emphasize the word when an external gtp can come and bind now this g can form a non covalent interaction so the interaction here is non covalent type so it can be reversible so this g can fall off from this place when the reaction is over right so g with a non covalent interaction it's an external g can bind with the pocket now this g can provide the hydroxyl so here this G can provide the hydroxyl and using this hydroxyl it will attack this E1 then E1 can be cleaved now it will have one hydroxyl at this 3 prime and phosphate at the 5 prime like the others now this 3 prime hydroxyl of E can attack the 3 prime splicing site which is between the intron and E2 or exon 2 as a result of this attack E1 can bind with E2 and as a result this region will be cleaved so here there will be g this region will be cleaved now what will happen this e1 is bind with two e e2 to produce mature mrna now this mrna is ready to produce proteins on the other hand the rest of the part is disassembled so the g is released and rest of the part is formed like that so the difference here is also in this lariate formation in the previous case like in spliceosome events as well as in case of group 2 intron uh, splicing group 2 intron uh, self splicing we can see the formation of lariate as a byproduct but in case of group 1 type we cannot find any lariate structure formation okay so these are the differences now <clears throat> the occurrence of this different splicing events can be observed this spliceosome mediated splicing is vastly found in higher eukaryotic organisms and their cells for example in us this kind of splicing is happening all the time but if we're talking about the group 2 uh, self splicing event we it can happen in eukaryotic cells in higher plants in animals or also we can find this kind of splicing going on but another feature of this splicing is that this type of splicing event can be seen in organelles okay on the other hand the last kind is group 1 type now this group 1 type uh, of splicing can be seen in case of organelles and also this type of splicing can be seen in case of some prokaryotes also here comes the twist yes we can find this kind of group 1 uh, self splicing in case of uh, some prokaryotes okay it has been observed okay so this is about the overview of mechanisms of different types of splicing and I hope it will help you. Thank you.